So today, speaking of silence, the silence that is always available to us, but is unfathomable by the mind. because it has nothing to do with thought or no thought. It has nothing to do with noise or no noise. Mostly we seek for silence with the mind, with the very instrument that seems to create the impediment to silence in the first place. Yeah, we try to get rid of thought. We try to stop thinking, or we try to have peaceful thoughts, or we try to create a quiet environment by getting rid of the need to do anything. But this is not the answer. Silence is here when we simply stop giving allegiance to the movement of mind. Not trying to stop the movement, but to stop giving our allegiance to it, to stop being devoted. Yeah? Most of humanity is devoted unconsciously to the movement of mind, the seeking mind, the mind that is seeking its satisfaction, that is seeking its fulfillment, that is seeking an identity for self from something it perceives from something it experiences, from something it knows in terms of acquisitive knowledge, beliefs, opinions, positions, either philosophical, spiritual, or worldly. And so there is an agitation And in that agitation, there is no peace. There is no true fulfillment. So something different is required to know this peace. We must have the courage to go where the mind cannot go. to leave the mind alone, to leave thoughts alone, to let the surface movement take place, to not bother with trying to stop anything or change anything or fix anything. This is a kind of falling. It's like falling off the edge of mind. Once this, once we've fallen off that edge, even momentarily, there is such a nectar in that, there is such a nourishment in that, that we will seek that silence again. That silence is available in the midst of everyday life. It is not confined to meditation. It is not confined to the ashram. It is not confined to any spiritual practice. It is here, always. 
and the invitation of life is always to that. When you touch it, when you taste it, when you've dipped your toe in it, it's then possible to make that your priority. It becomes your highest value. It means that in the midst of an agitated mind, in the midst of an agitation of the nervous system, a discomfort, a feeling that is intense or turbulent, In the midst of that, in the midst of an argument in the mind, in the midst of opposition to another or, or the world, even in the midst of that, when it is the priority, when silence is the priority, and silence is synonymous with awakening out of the dream of self self-righteousness, waking up out of the dream of the divided mind. Yeah. When that's your priority, when it's your highest value, then even in the midst of that which seems to be the opposite of silence, the impediment to silence, there is the opportunity, the very real opportunity to recognize, to know, yeah, and to, to know beyond the understanding of the mind. It's not an understanding, yeah, it's not a philosophical understanding or, or belief. To know, to recognize. Yeah, the possibility to know, to recognize in the midst of anything that appears, in the midst of all appearances. That there is a space <laughs> within which, out of which, and into which everything appears and disappears, everything arises and returns to, arises and dissipates. That is the awareness of awareness itself. Awareness of the space that is always here primary before anything arises, before agitation. Sometimes when I speak of awareness, becoming aware of awareness, it seems to create more confusion, yeah? Like, well, I don't understand that. What does that mean? You can't understand it with a mind, but something in you already knows that. It's not as complicated as it sounds. It's not a fancy spiritual technique. It's almost a softening of the gaze. When we give our attention, when we give our allegiance, devotion, to the movement of mind, it's like the gaze narrows, the inner gaze, the mind's gaze, narrows in on the content of its experience. The invitation of silence is to relax the inner gaze. And in relaxing the inner gaze, yeah. so that the focus is not limited to the content of what appears, 
neither is it the negation of the content. Let it be, but the gaze opens up. It softens, it relaxes. And already in that, yeah, we can call it space, we can call it silence, we can call it awareness itself, comes to the forefront. This is an ongoing invitation. from life itself. And life is whatever you are experiencing. So even in those moments when you feel the most contracted, even in those moments when you feel you have lost it, whatever it is, <laughs> those are precisely the moments in which the invitation is most potent. It's like it's knocking on the door. It's an invitation that requires you to be true to your highest value. The highest value that comes from your beingness, from the truth of your beingness. When we see that, when we know that, when we recognize that life is always knocking on the door, then there is no need to complain. The complaint ends. The complaint that well, I had silence, or I had awakening, or I had spiritual self-realization, or I had peace, and now it's gone. Why is life so cruel? Or why is life so difficult? I must practice more. I must be more spiritual. You know, that whole complaint comes to an end. Life is loving you by offering you the opportunity in the midst of the turbulence, in the midst of the agitation. It's saying, can you see? Can you see that this is an invitation to soften the inner gains, the inner relaxation that starts to unpack, unravel, purify the contractive and limited state of mind, heart, and nervous system, body. In this way, we start to embody silence rather than achieve silence. It's no longer a spiritual acquisition or accolade, but a whole new way of being, a whole new way of living because it has ramifications on how we move in the world, in how we respond to the world, including ourselves. Yeah, the world is the whole lot, <laughs> the inner world and the outer world and everything in it. It changes everything. So silence is not just for the spiritual seeker. It's fundamental to the evolution of humanity. 